Hello my chess friends! Today we are taking a look at another stunning performance by the King of Blitz, Magnus Carlsen, from the recent Mr. Dodgy online tournament in which he mercilessly and majestically punishes the young Super Grandmaster Daniel Dubov for simply failing to defend perfectly in a dubious line, culminating in a fantastic 7-move forced checkmate. So stick around at the end of the video to witness that, and without any further ado, here is the game. Magnus Carlsen begins the game with e4. We have c5 from Dubov, the Sicilian defense, knight to f3, knight to c6. Now here the most popular move for white is d4, placing a pawn in the center, achieving open diagonals for both bishops. But Carlsen plays the second most popular move here, bishop to b5. The most common responses for black here are d6, e6, or g6, but Dubov goes for the relatively unusual idea of playing e5 clamping down on the d4 square, saying to Carlson, you didn't play d4 when you had the chance, now I'm going to prevent it. But there is a drawback to this move e5, that is, the d5 square is now a hole in black's position. Black cannot attack that square with a pawn any longer, meaning Carlson is going to aim to permanently establish a piece on that square. But before he goes about doing that, he gets his king to safety by castling, and Dubov plays knight g to e7 adding some control to d5, also preparing to meet bishop takes c6 with knight takes c6, maintaining protection of e5 so that knight takes e5 doesn't happen. Here Carlson plays rook to e1. This is not a popular move among humans who reach this position, and the computer doesn't really like it either. Placing the rook on the e-file, adding some protection to the e-pawn, was not of utmost importance for white. A more challenging line would be c3. That way black does not have a good way to prevent white from getting in the move d4 you know, g6, d4. The bishop is not getting to this square quick enough to stop d4. Compare that to what was played in the game after rook to e1. Dubov plays g6. Now if white were to try the same thing with c3, there's bishop g7, and playing d4 will lose a pawn after c takes, c takes, knight takes, knight takes, e takes d4. White does have some compensation here because this is not a good pawn structure for black, but there's not really any good reason to go down a pawn like that. So Carlson just says, I'll play d3, I don't mind a quiet position, because Carlson is a master of finding and amplifying small advantages in quiet positions until they become overwhelming in his favor. Dubov continues bishop g7, now we got bishop to g5. Carlson is already playing for control of d5, pinning the only piece of black which has control of that square. So Dubov immediately puts the question to the bishop, what are you going to do? And Carlson answers by bishop takes e7. Now you might wonder, what about bishop to h4, maintaining the pin? Well, g5 is a good move for black here, kicking the bishop away, and after d6, black has a nice position, and can even castle on the king side, because white doesn't really have a good way to take advantage of the slight weakness created by these moves h6 and g5. If white were to play h4, black could just play g4. Black has a lot of space here, and is the preferred side. So Carlson plays the better move, bishop takes e7, and Dubov responds with the best move, knight takes e7, keeping control of d5. This is superior to taking with the queen, black has no control of d5, and at some point knight c3, knight d5 is going to come with a tempo on the queen. So that's an inferior line for black, knight takes e7, Carlson plays knight c3, we got castles, bishop c4, adding more control to d5, maybe looking to hop into that square with the knight. And if the knight takes, you can replace the knight with a bishop, as opposed to capturing with a pawn, which would compromise your pawn structure. Dubov plays d6, strengthening his center, opening the diagonal for the light squared bishop. Carlson jumps into d5 with his knight. Now Dubov plays knight to c6, eyeing the d4 square. If black had two free moves here, he would definitely play bishop to g4, followed by knight to d4 with pressure on this pinned knight. So Carlson is going to want to prevent one of those moves, so he plays c3, preventing knight d4. The alternative was to play h3, preventing bishop g4, but c3 is a little more useful. It supports a possible d4 advance in the future, and after c3, bishop g4 is not really a worry because then you can play h3. You can't move the bishop to h5 or it's getting trapped with g4, so the bishop's just going to have to move backwards and will have taken two moves to get to e6 instead of just one and white would have played a useful move h3 so that's not something black wants to do there dubov played a better move king to h7 removing the king from this sensitive diagonal so that maybe f5 could be played 
If you tried to play that move without moving the king first, it runs into a disaster because of knight c7, discovered check by the bishop, and then we'll pick up the rook. No good. So king to h7. Now Carlson plays a4, taking some control of the b5 square. It's going to be harder now for black to arrange b5 without losing a pawn. This also opens up the possibility of bishop to a2 in response to knight a5. So the bishop has somewhere to go, and black doesn't get the favorable knight for bishop trade. Dubov plays bishop to e6 here, contesting white's control of d5. Here Carlson plays h3, which looks like kind of a waiting move. This move usually has some value in that it gives the king a possible escape square, so later on there's no back rank, checkmate threats. It prevents bishop g4, although that move at the moment is not much of a threat. The computer thinks that this move h3 is a little too slow and that knight e3, playing this right away, might be a little better. Carlson actually played this on the next move. This move is useful because it prevents black from playing f5, which would take protection off the bishop. White would respond bishop takes e6 and win a piece. You don't want to take the bishop on c4 first, because after d takes c4, this pawn is a big weakness, since this file is opened. But after Carlson's move h3, Dubov could have played f5 here. That's what the engine likes. But Dubov does not play f5. Instead, he moves the rook to c8, which isn't a horrible move. Perhaps he's anticipating that Carlson will at some point play b4, and after pawn takes, pawn takes, this rook will have an open file to work with. Now Carlson plays knight e3, rendering f5 unplayable for the moment due to the threat to taking the bishop. So Dubov just backs up with the bishop, removing it from the view of this bishop so that f5 becomes a possibility. Carlson puts his bishop on d5 now. Maybe he's considering knight to c4, which would target this d6 pawn, which is no longer protected by the queen since the bishop's now on d7. Or maybe he's thinking about queen to b3 and there will not be a knight fork since there's no bishop on c4. Dubov plays queen to e7 here, completing his development, which is signaled by the fact that the rooks are connected. But again, the engine says that f5 was a better move. Now Carlson plays a5. This actually makes possible the move b4 in a rather subtle way. Let me show you the key variation. If black just played something pointless, let's say king to h8, there's b4. c takes b4, c takes b4, knight takes b4, Black grabs a pawn, but the bishop gets to grab the pawn on b7. And after rook b8, we can see the point of putting the pawn to a5 because now there's a6 and the bishop does not have to move. If the bishop had to move away, that would be a whole different story. This rook would have a nice open file to work with. But with the bishop's position secured on b7, now this rook is doing nothing and there's no rook c8 either because the bishop's covering that square. So this would be a nice variation for white. So that's quite subtle. Maybe Dubov sees this idea because he immediately plays rook to b8. So if the same moves are played, there won't be any bishop takes b7. Now Carlson connects his rooks with queen d2. The computer is not impressed with his queen move either. It says that a better move would have been knight to c4, which is one step closer to clearing the diagonal between the white rook and the black queen. That way, if f5 is played, white can get away with d4 here because of the following variation. C takes d4, c takes d4, knight takes d4. This would be good for black if this rook didn't have a threat to the black queen after this. E takes d4, e takes f5. No time to recapture. So another computer line. But Carlson's move is not bad. Neither player has made any significant mistakes so far. I'm just showing you the idealized play according to Stockfish. But at this moment, Dubov does begin to go wrong with this move knight to d8. Now it has some logic. The idea is knight to e6 and then maybe knight to f4. It's a bit of a weak square. And white could not immediately kick the knight with g3 because of knight takes h3 check. Carlson plays a good move here, bishop to c4, although maybe not best. His idea is to put the knight on d5 watching over f4. The computer likes rook e to b1, allowing knight e6 and then playing b4. Because here, if knight to f4 is played, b takes c5, d takes c5, and then we grab the pawn on b7. So you can't play that right away. Maybe the best move is bishop to c6. And now the engine is saying h4 with a couple ideas. If knight f4 is played, there's the possibility of g3, and there's not going to be any knight takes pawn because we've moved that pawn to h4. And we might even push it to h5. Taking on g6, creating a half open file. If g3 is played, king g2, and a rook comes in here, 
white could have a powerful attack. So yet another computer line, which seems to be slightly superior to what was played. Bishop to c4 is decent though, knight e6 and now knight d5, preparing to capture on f4 if the knight moves there. And also hitting the black queen, which moves to d8. Now Carlson plays the best move, he plays b4. Threatening to gain some space with b5, Dubov responds with the strongest move, c takes b4, and after c takes b4, he's now opened up the c5 square for the knight, so that if b5 is played, that knight's going to have a beautiful post. Also, he opened up the file for a rook to go to c8, and at this point he continues with f5. Finally gets that move in, but it's not as good as it would have been earlier. Carlson plays queen to e3, attacking a7. Dubov says, you can have that pawn, but Carlson declines. He plays rook a to c1 here. Let's look at what happens if he takes the pawn. There's f takes e4. You can't take with the pawn or you're losing your bishop. So rook takes e4 is necessary. Now bishop c6. White is a pawn up, but black has ample compensation. His bishop is on a powerful diagonal. There's a pin on the knight. The bishop's eyeing that rook. And even if the rook and then the knight get out of the way, there's a threat to the knight on f3 with the rook. If you play b5 here, black can just go bishop takes d5, bishop takes, and now there's knight to c5. The computer says this favors black. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that the knight is on c5, apparently, as we'll see in a future variation. And this white queen's getting pretty limited on squares. You gotta be careful you don't get trapped. So for those sorts of reasons, Carlson opts not to take the pawn on a7, and instead plays rook a to c1, probably a good practical decision. Although the engine does say queen takes a7 is close to equal, maybe even slightly favoring white. Now at this point, Dubov actually makes a blunder. He plays knight to d4. Apparently the best move here would be h5, preparing bishop to h6, which would come with an attack on the white queen. It would also support knight to f4. But after knight d4, Carlsen had the opportunity to get an overwhelming advantage with e takes f5, which he didn't play. He missed his best move. If black recaptures with the pawn, now there's knight takes d4, e takes d4, and the queen infiltrates. And there's no rook e8 here because of the threat of knight to f6. Check. The bishop's pinned by the queen, then you're going to pick up the rook. So that's how g takes f5 fails. What about knight takes f5? Well here queen takes a7 is actually improved from the variation we looked at before. Because after bishop c6, we can play b5, bishop takes, bishop takes, and apparently the fact that the knight's over here instead of on c5 tips the scales pretty heavily in white's favor. b7 is being attacked by two pieces. Finally, let's look at what may be black's best response. Knight takes f3 check. We capture with the queen. Now the engine's giving bishop takes f5. And white has queen to e3. Just attacking a7 again. If you defend with the rook, there's knight to c7, there's no queen takes c7 because bishop to g8 check would win the queen. If the rook moves attacking the knight, we're going to hop into e6 with the fork. That forces you to play bishop takes e6, bishop takes. And now that the bishop is hitting c8, black is going to have to give up any control of the only open file. Rook takes c1, rook takes c1. This bishop is being blocked by its own pawn. This bishop's very active, covering that important c8 square. So white's winning here. And there's more lines to look at, but that's just a sample. But Carlson did not take on f5, which was the strongest move. He took on d4. Dubov responded e takes d4, which is a game losing blunder. He could have exploited the fact that white did not take on f5 by playing this move f4 before recapturing. This forces the white queen to move. You can't take the pawn on f4 because e takes f4, the queen's hit, and you cannot maintain defense of the knight. So you're going to lose material in that line. So you have to move the queen. And then we take the knight on d4. Knight takes e4 can be played, but after bishop to e5, black has some compensation for being a pawn down here. This bishop is very active. Rook's active. His pieces are placed well for some sort of an attack on white's king side. We can contrast that to what happened in the game with the immediate e takes d4. This allows Carlsen to put his queen on g3 with an attack on d6. Now at this point, if Dubov was to play f4, knight takes f4, g6 is being targeted here. You can compare that to the variation we looked at previously where the queen was back on d2. This isn't so bad for black. He's got that bishop e5 move. But with the queen on g3, 
No time for that. You got to deal with the attack on g6. So let's say you push the pawn. Well, the knight can jump into e6 with the fork. Again, you got to give up your light squared bishop. And again, black is not going to be able to contest the only open file with the heavy piece due to this bishop's location hitting c8. That's why f4 is not good anymore. Dubov played bishop to e5, attacking Carlson's queen, but the queen does not need to move because there is the move f4. This is the best move played by Carlson, driving the bishop back, and now e takes f5. Dubov plays bishop takes f5. If you try rook takes f5, then there's knight to e7, hitting both g6 with the queen and knight and the rook on c8. I should probably mention g takes f5, just to be thorough. This runs into rook to e7, attacking that bishop which is pinned. If you try to defend that bishop, there's knight f6 check, so the king has to move, and then queen g6 will checkmate on the next move on h7. Just in case anyone was wondering about that line. Bishop takes f5 played in the game. And now Carlsen infiltrates with rook to e7, pinning the bishop. And here Dubov plays king to h8. I guess he thinks it's important to unpin the bishop so that maybe it can go to f6 at some point? I'm not really sure. But he's totally losing at this point, and there's really no way to save his game. Carlson just doubles his rooks, and now he starts getting desperate. He plays b5. I guess hoping for bishop takes b5, which would result in one less white piece pointed towards the king side. But Carlson takes on b6 on passant instead. And after a takes b6, he plays queen to f2. This is a sneaky move, setting up a tactic. Dubov again plays b5. Maybe he's hoping for bishop takes b5, rook b8 in a desperate attempt for some kind of counterplay. Carlsen just ignores that pawn and plays a beautiful move. See if you can find it. Rook to g7 is what Carlsen uncorked. It's not the only winning move, but it may be the clearest path to victory. After king takes g7, there's queen takes d4 check. That was the point of putting the queen on f2. If you were to take the bishop on c4 instead with b takes c4, same thing. Queen takes d4 is devastating, setting up a discovered check when this rook moves. And the king doesn't have anywhere to go to get out of that, so it's just game over. As it is after king takes g7, queen takes d4 check. And here, Dubov plays king to g8, allowing a checkmate in seven moves. Objectively speaking, king h7 would be better, although after rook e7 check, you're giving up your queen if you want to avoid the checkmate. Also objectively better would be king to f7, but you have the same thing with rook to e7 check, and you got to give up the queen. But after king g8 played in the game, Carlsen has a beautiful double check with knight f6, Check with the bishop, check with the knight. As we know, if you're in double check, you must move your king. The king goes to h8. If instead king g7, we got a checkmate with knight to e8. Double check, queen and knight, king h7, and then queen g7 checkmate. So after king h8, there's this discovered check, knight h5. Check by the queen. Now objectively, the best move here, although totally hopeless for black, would be rook to f6 which allows rook e8 check. And if the queen takes, we take like this, which will lead to checkmate after king h7, queen g7. What's played in the game though is king to h7. I don't know if he missed the checkmate in one move. Maybe he saw that his other options were completely hopeless and decided to allow Carlsen to finish him off with a beautiful checkmate. So that's the game. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching and please subscribe to the channel for more of the same coming your way soon.